So welcome to the School of Calisthenics. We're going to start this video blog just to put things in context with a quick quiz. Uh, follow along at home with us and um, yeah, we'll just see if you, you might be able to relate to some of the things we're going to talk about. So we're just going to a quick question, Dave. Have you ever, when you started calisthenics, did you start with any existing shoulder problems or history of shoulder injury? Yes. Broken my shoulder blade in two places and just my AC joint playing rugby team. Okay, so through calisthenics training, have you suffered any shoulder, elbow or wrist pain? Yes. And do you think that maybe taking a slightly more proactive approach to pain management and rehabilitation, thinking that maybe you're starting something new and therefore the high levels of stress you're going to place on your body, taking a preventative strategy would have been advisable in that circumstance. Excuse the pun, but it pains me to say so, yes. <laughs> so, we've all, we, we, we kind of seem to represent the masses with the people that we meet in calisthenics, and a lot of people struggle with these um, elbow, wrist, and shoulder problems. We're, we're putting a lot of stress on tendons, ligaments, and connective tissue, and those things all take quite a long time to adapt. And that's going to restrict us in our ability to produce force and get into certain shapes as well as potentially lead to injury. So um, we're going to show you using um, a bit, little bit of self-massage, using a ball and some mobility work um, with the rubber bands from rubber bandits rather than um, how to use them for progressions of exercises, which we do. Also, we want to give you some content about how you can start looking after your wrists, elbows and shoulders to A, not get injured, but B, also restore range of motion so you can be more effective with your training when you get into it. A lot of SMR or self myofascial release or self massage techniques focus on lats and pecs and one of the ones that we often forget about is a bicep and sometimes you find yourself on a physio or sports massage couch and they start getting into this bad boy, it is absolutely miserable, it gets so tight but we can be a bit more proactive and take a little bit more of a strategic approach by maybe staying on top of it. So what's going to happen here, Jacko's got a barbell, again this is pretty heavy, he's going for a 20 kilo one, you can use lighter bars if you're particularly sore in this. Oh, but it's hard or go. Home and you're going to see the Gruffalo face. So he starts to spend a bit of time working through the bicep from top to bottom, and then we can actually, if we find that we're looking for these tight points, if he finds that, he can then start to work through a little bit of elbow flexion extension. Now, the interesting thing about muscles that we need to remember is, and adhesions particularly, where this tissue gets stuck down and bind together, it doesn't just run in a nice linear fashion, it runs all over, it's all completely random. So Jacko's going to start to, again, find these trigger points, but then start to move around and get across, work into some oblique patterns across the, uh, the fibres there. So We're just trying to break it up and loosen everything up. Yeah, so going like turning in, turning out of that arm straight as well as flexing and bending the elbow. If I come into that flex position and then start to internally externally rotate, that's just absolutely disgusting uh, in there and is really doing some decent work to loosen that off. So we're going to have a look at the forearms particularly. Now these guys here are going to have a, a bigger impact on joints above and below. So any tightness in the forearm could manifest itself in some problems in the wrist or more commonly probably in the elbow. If you've ever had pain on this particular sore point on the bone on the inside of the elbow or on the outside, we're suffering golfer's elbow or tennis elbow. And those can come from being overworked into flexion or extension patterns. So if we're going to work muscle ups and we're doing a lot of pull ups and we're, we're kind of practicing our false grip on muscle ups for the rings potentially, Getting into these kind of shapes is going to cause a lot of additional tension down this mid um, line of the flexors of the forearm. Alternatively, going into handstands, we're going to put a lot of pressure on the wrist and we can get tight in the extensors. So we've got a real simple technique that we can use. Going to take the hockey ball. These ones work well with a hard ball rather than something too soft. And then we're just going to put some pressure down like Jacko is there. So place it underneath you. Yeah. Hand goes on top so you can start to really push in. And again, you're going to see some nasty face faces being pulled from me. Find those horrible points, and then what really flipping canes is when you start to then move the wrist through some of those ranges that Tim was just talking about, as well as taking the fingers through as well, so you're separating those different finger flexors and extenders. Remember what we're trying to do guys is loosen up some of this tissue that's become stuck down and matted together. Healthy joints, healthy tissue needs to slide and glide and we need to get some of that restriction and that adhesion out of the muscles. Those sore points and those knots and gristle, that's tightness, overworked um, tissue which has become glued down and stuck together. Loosen it off and we're going to get start to get some more range of movement but also decrease our risk of injury and the subsequent pain. 
So next up, we're gonna have a look at the tricep. Now again, we have to look at the joints above and below to see where the tricep, if it gets tight, could be causing some problems. So with it being its attachment points from the long head of tricep and the shoulder down and through to the elbow, we could get some problems and dysfunction in one of those two joints. So we're gonna to start to just, again, take the ball and start to just smash out some of that tissue. So Jacko is gonna place the tricep onto the ball there. Again, he can hold it if he needs to, to keep it stable puts the pressure down and then again we're really interested in this position particularly of working that elbow extension and starting to find the, the sore points. What's basically happening here, the pressure of the ball onto the muscle and then going through the extension is going to start to really pull that muscle over that, um, the, the point of contact with the ball which is going to be a bit more effective at one giving us more range of movement but two starting to really break down some of those um, nasty kind of adhesions where we've got that, that tight collagen tissue which is all packed in together causing some of the restrictions in, in the elasticity of the muscle. One of the ones that I suffer with with this golfer's elbow is because these guys got too tight. I went through a real phase of trying to get a lot of pull-ups in my program. So we're just gonna spin the wrist over, we're gonna go ball on top, pressure down, and you can start to get drilled into some of those tight areas. Again, Jacko's gonna go through that wrist extension and flexion and also get the fingers involved, loosen that sort of stuff off, work up and down and across the fibers, find out where you saw and spend some time there. We've worked then into both sides of the forearm, trying to loosen off some of that tight tissue and you should be working in where's tightest for you. Next up is to try and um, stretch and, and increase the range of motion at that joint and we're gonna use the band here to take us into some extension of the wrist to help with those handstand positions. So Tim hooks the band around, he's then gonna put his hand into it and then he's going into um, in a position where you can try and create more extension at that wrist and he's going to be just pulling again all these tissues the band is just putting the um, the wrist in a position that's going to require more mobility of that joint so we're getting a more intense stretch as well as just staying there you can see he's trying to get more range coming backwards as well as exploring the corners moving side to side and twisting in that position just to try and really open up that joint being able to create a better, more beneficial position here with the band is important, guys. Tightness through the, the forearm flexors here can start to play around with the joint mechanics. So the band is just trying to put us into a position where we can offset some of that dysfunctional kind of overuse and put us back into a more neutral wrist position. And then we can flip it over and work into this uh, flex position. So Tim then puts his uh, hand down the other way around and then he's doing the same thing. He might use the other hand to track it down and then he can start to work into, into those joint angles where we're creating more uh, flexion at the wrist, which is going to be great for those false grip positions uh, for your muscle-ups. We've worked into the tricep then, trying to loosen off some of that tight tissue in there. Now it's time to try and stretch that and we're gonna look at taking it into an overhead position to help with those handstands. So Tim's gonna place the band around the pole and he's gonna put his hand through and then grab it so it's pulling on the wrist. It then rotates around, the hand goes behind the back and the elbow is going above the head. The band is then pulling back and trying to encourage the elbow to go backwards more into a more overhead position. What's important is that he also keeps this body alignment. So just he doesn't start arches back just to try and find some more range. He keeps tight rib cages down. We've got a nice alignment through here. And then he can try and explore the corners. He's not just staying statically there. Explore the corners, rotating through, but conscious of trying to relax and let the band pull the elbow backwards and just open up this joint here um, so we can get into those better overhead positions. Just go stay with this one, guys. If you've had issues around shoulder dislocations or subluxes or anything like that in the, in the past, just go easy. It's a pretty extreme position maybe start with a light band on those ones but it is a great stretch it starts to open out that shoulder get rid of some tension decrease the, the restriction in there we're going to start to get the shoulder in a much better position and we're going to take away this risk of overuse and injuries we're going to look at the shoulder joint now and trying to restore some range of motion above head and also behind the backs so we're going into shoulder extension and internal rotation if we're lacking ranges here and here because the shoulder is forward in a forward position like this it's going to affect how well i can get my arm overhead and how well i can create this uh, extended position with the arm internally rotated so we're going to use the band to help pull that shoulder back into a more uh, better position for the shoulder but and then take it through these ranges so tim's going to hook his arm into the band he's then going to let go forward so he's got a heap load of tension on the band and you're going to see rather than fight against it initially here he's going to let the band pull it back so the band is helping to keep that back in the back of the socket a much better position for the shoulder so we can move effectively then he's going to take the arm and try to work into an overhead position 
and not fight against the band, but let the band keep the shoulder back in the back of the socket. And then he's also then going to come into here where he's going to get some internal rotation, which is important. And then also keeping this arm back, the shoulder back and the arm going behind the body into that shoulder extension. The whole time he's also working a little bit on his alignment. So keeping his core tight and going through those full ranges for the shoulder, just restoring some of that shoulder range, as well as helping the humerus stay in a better position in the back of that shoulder socket where we want him and where he's safe. The shoulder's got a huge capacity for movement, guys. So we, for it to be healthy, it needs to have options around that. Restricted shoulder is gonna mean that we compensate. So this sort of stuff is just great. We're getting full range of movement. We're starting to play around with some positions. Good range of movement means we're gonna have a great opportunity for the shoulder to be stable, provided it's got the stability to keep it safe and strong. Okay, so now we're going to work on stretching and mobilizing the lat. The lat is going to restrict us in being able to go overhead. The lat wants to take us into this handcuff position. So we're going to use the band to help accentuate this stretch. So Tim's going to put his hand in the band, he's going to grab it, and then he's going to take back. So he's got a load of tension in the band. The band is now pulling and he's got to allow it to open up that joint, distract it and open it up. He's then going to explore some different corners in here, arching the back to try and elongate that lat as much as possible. And he's also going to try and rotate the hand into a more externally rotated position because the lat is in internal rotated so the more he can turn his hand out the better that stretch is going to be and he's going to hang out in there and try and let the band pull him uh, that joint open and try and just restore some ranges which is going to help us for those overhead positions whether that's the start of your muscle up or a pull up or whether it's in your handstand position it's going to help with restoring that range so that's it guys, there is so much there for you to get stuck into. What we're really encouraging you to have a think about is that injury needs a preventative strategy rather than a reactive one. Don't wait until you get injured to then start to think, oh, now I need to put something in place. Yes. Start to put some of these things into your warm up. I actually at the moment dedicate one of my sessions to just doing some of this work, to, just to try and stay on top of things. Um, and it's just a case of rather than waiting until you've got a big problem that stops your training, that's gonna hinder you the most. Try and keep on top of it um, as you go through. The other one takeaway take away message, guys, is that you need to rest. We can't just continually load the upper body day after day after day in calisthenics. You need to schedule your rest days. And when we've found that we've had injuries, actually forced periods of rest is the one thing which makes them clear up. So just think about that. Don't overload it and take an intelligent strategy towards your training by including the first thing is to get that rehab into your early stage of your movement preparation for before each session.